Aluminium A1 Creatives, 1 part liquid, 2.5 parts powder. And you open the tub, you get a little pot inside. So, start off. giving the mould a bit of a dust with the powder. You can already see the metallic shine coming up in places. It's a bit too deep in other places uh, so I will just have to tap some of that off afterwards. So if it gathers too much in certain bits you're going to lose a bit of the detail but as long as you do it um, evenly you're still going to retain all of the detail and it'll be beautiful. So, yeah. Probably should have started doing this before the video, but I wanted to, it to see it from start to finish. Uh, and I will do one for every type of um, A1 Creatives from start to finish so that then you can see exactly how to use them all. Oh, Mr's nose, let's get some on his nose. You can miss some on his nose as well. Come on, a little bit in there please. Thank you. Okay. A bit more there. And then I'm just going to tap it out, I think, to get rid of any excess so I don't lose any detail. I don't think that's too bad, really. I think that should be alright. That looks very shiny. I think I might have had a bit of mica left on my brush when I started that one. Oh well, it'll give an interesting effect. Sometimes it's best not to uh, clean all your utensils properly. And you get something nice and pretty at the end. Okay, so we'll tap that off. We'll tap it off onto there and then I can use it on something else. Or not, because nothing seems to have come out of it. So, that'll be fine. Um, right, what did I just say? I said it was, right, turn your scales on. Put the silicon cup on and zero it off. The liquid sometimes settles a bit and so always give it a good shake before you start to pour. Now I haven't actually done this cast before so I'm going to guess on the amounts but I will find out the exact amounts and add it to the list on the um, in the Facebook group uh, which is Aaron Creatives on Facebook and all the measurements for each of the Zuri moulds is in there for you just for those that don't want to waste it so I'm guessing at roughly 90 grams which with aluminium at the 2.1 at 5 it's going to be 91 so 26 liquid we're going for if my scales don't reset because I've been a bit long uh, right the I have a little nozzle on this so it makes really easy for precision pouring obviously obviously for the first bit you can just squirt it in until you get it up to what did I say I said 26 didn't I right we're on 22 can you see that yes you can 23 25 is that really 25 or is it going to jump to 26 26 okay so that's one part liquid which is 26 so two parts powder is going to be let me just check because my maths is rubbish uh, 65 but it's coming to 91 in total anyway oh it's gone up to 27 never mind it's very close it's only just popped over to 27 so it's probably closer to 26 than 27 
so I'm still going to stick with 91 total um, and that should still cure fine um, we do advise you to be as accurate as possible but as long as it's pretty close you, sh you should be fine what did I say 91 oh numbers 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 right 71 Sometimes this needs a little bit of a mix. I don't know if you can see um, the aluminium one has got other things in it. So it's not just a, a white like some of the others are. 84. 87. 90. 91. Just put a little bit more in as it went over. Okay. So take that off, turn that off so I don't kill the batteries and grab a sturdy thing it's not exactly clean but it'll be fine so make sure it's all mixed in until um, it's pretty smooth you will find that the ones that are 2.5 pot powder uh, thicken up a little bit more than the ones that are just a 1 to 2 measurement obviously it's got that little bit more powder in it um, but it needs it to cure correctly and to get that lovely finish so just pay attention that depending on which type you're going for um, you do have the the amounts right and don't just think that all A1 creatives have got the same mixing ratio because they haven't still a little bit lumpy. Some people like to use a, an electric mixer but I'm quite happy doing it by hand. It doesn't take that long. You just have to make sure that you are scraping around uh, the bottom and mixing it in properly so you've not got any lumps left. Very uh, pancake mixture worthy. So can you see that? I don't know if you can. I wasn't looking at the camera then. If you see how runny it is, it's pretty runny. I think you saw that. I wasn't looking again. <gasps> oh dear. But you know what mixing powder is, don't you? So then it's not lumpy. Uh, right, I might say that that is okay. doesn't look too bad does it okay scrape most of that off there don't want waste not that it will be wasted nothing will be wasted anything that's left over will either go in another mold if it's still liquid and if it's uh, set around the sides it'll be used in texture on something else or as filler or something right I like to just pour a little bit in first when I'm trying to get a perfect cast um, I want to make sure I've got it in all the little nooks and crannies and so I personally like to go in with a brush and brush it on or dab it on so that I know it's got into every little bit you can just tip your mould you can pour more in and tip your mould and get it into all the nooks and crannies like that and then make sure that you tap it afterwards to release any air bubbles which I'll still tap it to release any air bubbles but I just like to for this initial layer I like to use a brush and then uh, as you'll see in a minute I just rinse it out in a, a bottle of water so that then it doesn't kill my brush instantly and I can get quite a few I've been using this brush for months now and quite I don't know how many casts I've done with it a lot and although I'm starting to get quite a firm oh I forgot the name of that end of the brush oh look at it where it joins the uh, handle oh there's a name never mind uh, it's starting to get a little bit solid there I've still got enough brushy bristly bit at the other end to still have a decent brush effect 
I'm not sure if there's quite enough to do all three of these. Well, there might be. Anyhow, we'll do the initial layer because you will find that even if you haven't got enough, uh, you can top them up at a later date. Or straight away, mix some more and top it up straight away. But I sometimes, if I'm doing other th things, uh, I will leave a mould half full. Uh, and then when I'm doing another cast, fill it up later, sometimes with a different colour. Uh, it doesn't matter as it's on the back, you won't see it through, or if you're planning on painting over it, you won't see it through. Or you can do it as a mottle the marble the effect sort of thing. Right. So I'd like to brush a bit of that off. Have I got, yes, I have an embossing folder to just clean off a little bit of excess off my brush then when that is filled up I will pull that off and use as texture in the background for something else so that's as much as I'm getting off that brush at the minute put that to one side grab my whoops, bottle of rather mucky water that I've already been using for this and just give it a little little wiggle get the excess off and then uh, I've normally got some tissue I don't seem to have brought any tissue out with me today never mind we'll use that uh, towel to just give it a little bit of a little bit of a thing I don't know if you can see how the base there is quite solid but I've still got bristly stop bristly top bit it's fine it'll do me some more anyway Right, so, pour in the rest of this, it's quite warm in here so it's already starting to set a bit so I might actually give that another little mix, it can just bring it back a little bit more, yeah I don't think I've got enough in here to do all these, miscalculated that a bit. But never mind, it'll be fine. Because these, uh, this mould's a bit deeper than I thought it was. I looked at it enough. Never mind. I might get a couple of them done. Anything that goes over the sides not to worry about it will easily uh, wipe off or break off um, at various stages you can either do it straight away or you can let it set totally and do it or let it set a bit and do it options I like options right yeah I'm only gonna get two of these filled does not matter And do the other one later. Um, you can cast A1 in any conditions. The warmer it is, the quicker it will set, and the less less time you have to uh, play with it in the mold, maneuver it in the mold. Uh, but it is still possible to still use it in warm conditions. As this mould is quite deep, I don't think I really need to fill it up to the top anyway. I think it should be fine. Um, I've got videos on of some of the thinner moulds, more delicate ones, uh, that it's advisable using a bit of support, which these should be fine, as long as I get enough in those ears, so they don't snap off, because they're probably the weakest point, but like I say, with it being a deep mould, as long as I get those bits filled up, they should be fine. 
you've also got I'm hoping to uh, take this out of the mould after about an hour uh, which if I leave it overnight then there'll be no problem taking it out of the mould but because I'm planning on taking it out soonish I could do with it being um, pretty much flush with the top okay well that looks a little bit messy but it doesn't matter because it's the back for starters and in a minute it should sink down a bit anyway and then just give it a little bang but like I say because it's warm in here and it's the 2.5 mixture it does set a bit quicker it's a bit thicker and it sets a bit quicker thicker and quicker now do I do another quick mix so that was 90 and it's almost done too so very quickly mix a little bit more just to top those up I don't, know, I don't want to mess with it too much because once it gets to a certain point of setting you really don't want to be moving your mould um, because that's when your hairline cracks can form um, and make it brittle and break as long as you don't move your mould after a certain point unlike with a standard resin you can move it at any point when it's setting and you will not form hairline cracks um, the way that this works oops something just ran across my roof I think that was a bird yeah I can hear it blackbird I forgot what I was saying there. It's as bad as if a squirrel appears. Ooh, squirrel. Right. Let me think. Do I mix a bit more? I'll leave that to set. Hmm, I might leave that to set and see how it goes. Uh, and I will come back shortly to demold. Show you how it's turned out. Okay. See you in a bit. Uh, right, take them out of the mould time. I've got to be careful as I didn't fill that end one, I don't really want to crack that. So I shall try and carefully take these ones out without disturbing the end one. Mm-hmm. Where are I? There we are. Can you see that? So we've got all the detail. And move that extra bit round the side. You can easily just break off. Because it's, it's really thin round those edges. So what we say about, you know, the delicate bits can break off. You can just pull those little bits off. But the rest of it's pretty firm. Okay, put that to one side a minute. I hope that this one's deep enough that I don't snap the ears off. I think it should be. It's just slowly teasing it out. And then even with delicate ones, if you're really careful, uh, you you won't even break those, but when it's got a bit of depth to it, 
and it's, it's really not an issue and then see these extra bit can you see those extra bits there because they're really thin you can just easily oops break those bits off just like that okay there we go tidy it up a little bit uh, you can always wet sand it if you really want but there's no need uh, if you want a really really smooth edge if there's too much roughness but it shouldn't be it should be fine where are we there we go I think you can see all the detail there pick it all up now can I get hold of that let me see if I can grab a towel and see whether this will shine up at all. Well, ideally, I'd leave this overnight just to fully cure to make sure it's proper, proper firm before I started uh, polishing it. And you know it's set properly. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. But it is starting to get a shine on it. Um, I'll polish it again tomorrow. When it's been set longer. Um, and then try and get a better photograph. Oops. That I'll put on the social media. Uh, to show that it does look like aluminium uh, with a proper proper shine to it like a light metal proper light properly light metal oh it's not good for me today Oops. but yeah like I say uh, a 24 hour curing time it, it just toughens it up that little bit more and so you can be that little bit rougher with it I mean I, I'm being pretty rough with it now and it's not taking away any of the detail at all so it's not like oh well you know it's not properly cured and so you can't do this you can yeah, yeah. Can, can you see that on his nose that's now really shining like metal see the other places that I haven't popped right so that's A1 Creatives aluminium in the uh, what's it called Whew, Anubis heads Zuri mold 